Some variations. You can have indexes on up to 32 columns. There will be a composite index. I have to say, in my own opinion, if you ever found you needed an index on 32 columns, I would suggest there was something severely wrong with your data analysis. But yes, you can do it. Think about the key length with 32 columns. Very wide, right? It's going to be far too wide. You'll actually probably be hitting the limits. There are limits that one, no one key can be more than approximately 80% of a block. That's a limit built into Oracle. So depending on your block size, using 8K blocks, you cannot have a key longer than about um, 6.5K, if I remember correctly. You might well be hitting that limit if you went to such a wide index. But there's some great value for it. Imagine an application such as this. There'll be many cases where people are saying, select ename from emp, where empno equals say 7369, give it a primary key, get another column back, and Oracle's done it with the index lookup. What if I were to create a composite index? Create index, and I shall call it, say, id name on emp, empno ename, a composite index. On what form. And now run that code. Okay, let's have a look at it. Hey, how cool is that? In principle, I probably doubled performance because I've got my Mrs. Smith has come back and I haven't had to go to the table at all. How has it worked? My column is my query is filtering on empno and projecting ename. And both those columns are in the index. So Oracle can satisfy the query without hitting the table at all. That's what we call index overloading. This can be a very good use of composite indexes. Though, of course, the, the obvious usage is when you've got predicates on multiple columns that you're using, or maybe multi column joins. Right. But Bear in mind, overloading can have a big impact on improving performance. But of course, in this case, what's the problem? I've now got two indexes on Empno. So I really need to start adjusting. I've now got a totally redundant index, which is PKM. So if I'm going to add another index like this, I need to think about adjusting my constraints and dropping the original index, because otherwise I'm in the situation of having two indexes when one would do. There's some general rules for composite indexes, and they're very general indeed. Um, it's often said you should have the least selective column first. Well, in my case, I've done the reverse of that. The most selective column is the unique one. But that's because I've considered the nature of my application. My application is that I use that as the predicate to retrieve that. So that's a good reason for having that empno as the leading edge of the index. But the reason people will generally say least selected column first, it helps with key compression. If you're using compression when you create your indexes, with the compressed indexes, one of the comments earlier about size of indexes, I saw there was a comment about number of distinct values. If you compress your index, and we'll see the syntax shortly, then the, if the leading column is least selective, you'll get significant space savings and consequent performance improvements. Yeah, because there'll be fewer distinct values stored. Skip scan again. Skip scan. Imagine you have a query such as this. I've got a composite index on that. What if I run select star from emp where ename equals king? I'm playing games with the optimizer here, by the way. It's a really dangerous thing to do. I never quite know what Oracle is going to come up with because Oracle is cleverer than me. Look at that predicate, ename equals king. And look at that index. Can that query use an index? Is it an indexable access path? I'll show you. Let's see. Repeat the question, please, John. I've given the answer. <laughs> yeah. I was asking, is that query going to be indexable? Is the, can that use an index access path? And the answer is, yes, it can through the skip scan. 
right, through the skip scan. So, skip scan on composite indexes are the good reason for using composite indexes. Rather than indexing half a dozen columns, maybe you could just have one or two composite indexes. A skip scan is never as efficient as a range scan. With the range scan, I've gone for the leading edge. I've given my predicates the leading edge of the index. That means we can use a range scan. Here, I've specified a column that's further on in the index key. It can still use the index, but the skip scan is not nearly as efficient. It has to probe the index multiple times. Again, composite indexes, skip scans, will generally be much more effective if you have the least selective column first. And this brings us to an important point. You have to understand your data. You have to understand your queries. Then you can work out what indexes will be usable by which queries under what circumstances. Right. Now, don't just blindly create an index. Think about what could or couldn't use it.